Hey guys, join us in this video to see how we pour and install some shower panels. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. In this pour, we're gonna be doing an exotic pour. So we're gonna be using um, seven ounces per square foot, which normally on our, on our normal pours, we use three ounces. Uh, and the reason that we're doing the seven ounces is because I want a lot of material on the surface uh, to get the reactions that we're gonna get. So using that much epoxy with the amount of square footage that we have, we're gonna be using over three gallons of epoxy. Now, I don't like to mix more than a gallon at a time uh, because by the time I get all my colors mixed, it, it starts to kind of start warming up. So what we're gonna do is Leslie's gonna mix, she's gonna be in the background mixing up colors uh, are mixing up our epoxy while we're gonna be out in the front pouring. So we're gonna start off with our first mix, which is a gallon. Uh, we're using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy and we're using the Art Coat because we're gonna have white in our finish. Uh, we're going, uh, like I said, one to one. We like to add part B first because B is less viscous. It's not as thick and when we add the part A to the mixture, the part A is gonna fall down through part B and we get a more accurate measurement quicker. We don't have to wait uh, as if we were to pour part A first. So she's gonna be mixing that up. Then we'll split it into our color cups and then we'll start mixing all the colors. So y'all leave me a comment. What do y'all think about my, my help here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Only good comments are allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie is the backbone of RK3. All right, so we're doing 128 ounces on this pour, and we're going to do this two and a half times. No, three. Yeah, three and a half times. Three and a half times. All right, so when I mix up this much material, instead of mixing for two minutes, which is what we usually do, we're going to probably mix closer to three, even four minutes. You wanna start your mixer off very slowly so that you don't entrain a lot of bubbles. All right, so the reason that we scrape the edges of our bucket is because as you mix, you're not able to get all of the material that's stuck on the side of the bucket. So by scraping and hand stirring, we then take all of that material and we make sure that it's thoroughly mixed. If you don't do this, there is a chance that you could uh, get sticky spots when you empty out your bucket. So on a big pour like this, we may do this a couple of times. Okay, so we're ready to start adding all of our colors. And we're using different mediums, meaning we're using a dye, we're using mica powders, and we're using spray paint. So the combination of these different types of mediums are really gonna fight when we pour them all together and we're gonna get some really cool designs. When I mix up uh, large amounts of the mica powder, I like to use our dispersion fluid and what that does is it helps the mica powders to disperse evenly in the epoxy and we don't get the little dry pockets of mica powder. Um, which causes these little starbursts. So if you've ever poured a finish where you use the mica powders and you see these little starbursts later on in your pour, that's what it is. It's the material hasn't been mixed up enough. So what I'm gonna do, and I only do this to the mica powders, um, we're gonna be filling these cups up quite a bit. And this is right at 32 ounces, I believe. So I'm gonna put three Capfuls, let me see, I'll look at this. Let's start off, I'm gonna do two capfuls first and if I need more, I can do that. You don't wanna to put too much. If you put too much, it uh, actually causes the epoxy to uh, slow down on the cure process a little bit and you don't want that. All right, so Leslie is adding our silver metallic and I'm gonna be doing a cup of our white 
metallic powder. And everybody asks me, well, how much do you use? And basically, what I do is I kind of just eyeball it. I want my powder to be very opaque, the color to be very opaque in this pour. So um, probably we're going to do probably maybe a quarter of an ounce is what we're going to put into this. We sell our mica powders on our website in half ounce bags. So probably I used about half a bag, but we'll see when I pour the epoxy how opaque it is. All right, so that's these two colors. And then I'm gonna be doing an accent color, which is our bronze metallic. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm really just kind of making a slurry. It's, it's um, kind of a paste. I don't want my mixture to be too runny. Also, when you use these cups, make sure that you stir really well because you'll get mica powder built up in this little reservoir down in the bottom of the cup. So you can see it's just kind of wanting to drip. So the colors that we're gonna be using besides the mica powders are khaki, Rust-Oleum khaki, Rust-Oleum charcoal gray, and Rust-Oleum winter gray. And then we're also using our white Alumalite dye. All right, so we're gonna start mixing the opaque dye. And just like when we mix the um, mica powder, I want this to be an opaque color. So the way that I can tell if my dye is thick enough or opaque enough is when I lift it up, I can't see the grain of the stick. So when we're mixing our spray paint into the cups, if you're by yourself, guys, obviously I'm doing a video so I don't have a mask on, but I do wear a mask when I use the spray paint. You wanna protect your lungs. I'm not worried about the epoxy because the epoxy's um, stone coat countertop is zero VOCs and there's uh, no solvents in the formula. So it's very safe. Also, I'm in a very large environment and we have good ventilation. All right, so here we go. Spray paint, make sure you cover so that you're not breathing all those fumes. Now, I don't wanna put so much paint that it makes my epoxy thin. You really won't get an opaque color like you will with your dyes and your mica powder. It's gonna be a little more transparent. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit more because my epoxy is still at a good consistency, but if I add too much, it'll get really, really runny. Okay, so now that we have everything mixed up, it's time to put it all in the bucket. There's really no perfect recipe on how to add to your bucket. Um, in fact, when we mix the other buckets, we're gonna mix them all different. That's gonna give us uh, the different looks as it comes out of the bucket. Just pay attention to what colors you're putting next to each other. I wouldn't wanna put my charcoal gray paint in right after I put my silver because those two colors are so much alike. All right, we're gonna start off with our white mica powder. And then what Leslie's gonna do is put a little bit of spray paint in between our layers. It doesn't have to be every layer. Um, it's just kind of a preference, whatever you wanna do. That spray paint is what really causes some fun designs as it comes out of the bucket. All right, so that I don't waste material, I turn the cups upside down on the surface and I'm just gonna scoop everything out. And then what I'm gonna do is just take my stick and I'm just gonna run that material over the surface. And all that'll do is help 
the epoxy to kind of flow out. Now this is a step, you don't have to do this step. It just kind of helps that epoxy to run a little better when we, when we pour it out. Okay. So we have our panels laid out like they're gonna be installed. So I'm gonna be jumping to each of the uh, panels so that it looks like it's gonna be all one big piece of stone. Um, all right, so here goes. Now, so that I can incorporate the same color, I'm gonna come pour on this one. And then I'm gonna come pour a streak on this last one. And as it starts to move across, you'll be able to see kind of how the colors are starting to change, which is really what a real slab does, is you have that variance of color change. We'll mix up some more epoxy and we'll just keep doing this process until we fill up all the panels. This is our second bucket we're mixing up. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of an audible. I want to add a little more warmth in my accent color, the bronze. So what I'm gonna do is in my second batch of colors that we're mixing up, I've done my bronze, but I'm gonna add a little bit of dark. <coughs> so I'm gonna add a little bit of my dark bronze to my regular bronze to give it a little bit of a warmer tone. And then in our third batch of colors that we mix, I'm only gonna mix up the dark bronze. So that's gonna give me a variation of that accent color bronze. I think that's gonna look really cool. All right, so for this bucket, I'm gonna actually start on the third panel and work myself back to the first panel that we poured. Okay, so I'm throwing in another color audible. With our charcoal gray, again, I wanna warm it up a little bit. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of the black spray paint into the charcoal spray paint. Oh yeah. That just gives me one more shade change, which gives more variation in that final pour. You'll notice that I'm getting a lot of runoff here on my edge, which is my rock edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna push that material around the edge. I'm not worried about messing up that design because all of that epoxy is gonna run off anyway. When I pull that tape, it's gonna help the epoxy runs smoothly to make sure I have plenty of material on my edges. When you use white spray paint in between your layers of the color and then you torch it, you get a really cool little effect. You get these little white specks and it seems to me that white is the really the only color that I ever noticed this happening with. Okay, so we've let the epoxy set for about an hour and 15 minutes. So now we're gonna pull the tape. Gonna be fun, this is my favorite part. So when I pull, I like to pull down so that I'm helping that epoxy to kind of run over the edge. They did a great job. All right, so the reason this is just a, at a 90 degree angle is because this is gonna be against the wall. So I'm really not worried about this edge and the way it looks and how it rolls over. Now, if you'll notice right here, I'm a little thin, so you can actually see through to the rock edge, which I really like that because that really makes it look like a rock and makes it look more realistic. I'm not worried about um, the coverage because I know I'm gonna be coming over with the ultimate top coat and that's gonna protect all of that edge.
All right, so it's been 24 hours. Our tops are dry. We pulled the tape. I actually went in and put a glaze medium on our rock edge, which looks really cool. And if you want to know how to do that, I'll link a video in the description below and it will show you how we did the glaze and how we made that rock edge look really uh, natural. We're gonna be doing the matte UTC on these uh, foam boards. I'm not gonna be doing a, a, a flood coat on these because our uh, finish laid out so well I don't have any imperfections that I need to worry about. Uh, these are not going to be high traffic areas like a countertop. So not putting a flood coat and going straight with the UTC is going to be perfectly fine. All right, so we're here back at the apartment. We're going to install the shower panels. Just a word of advice. It's going to be kind of cramped and it's going to be kind of hard to show you everything because we're very limited space. But uh, I'm going to show you as best I can. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the Liquid Nails brand, it's just a silicone, and I'm gonna add it all the way around the perimeter. All right, so now I got the silicone on the backside. As you can see here, we've red guarded the walls, two coats of red guard all the way around. That way that just gives it a water membrane and it makes it more waterproof. Let's see if we can get this in here now. This is panel number two going in. We're gonna do the same process. This is gonna go against this uh, right side wall. All right, so you can see I braced it up. Maybe a little overkill, but uh, I did four front and back. So we'll give it 24 hours, pull it off. I apologize for the lighting, but here you go. There's the panels. And you can see everything is taken down. Siliconed on the walls, everything looks really good. So now what we'll do is we'll cock all the way around, down the seams and we'll call it good. All right guys, that'll do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you liked it or if you wanna see more content like it. Also, you could visit our website at rk3designs.com to find most of these products that we used in this video. Hit the bell for future notifications and subscribe to our channel. That always helps out. Until next time, adios.